Hello everyone, welcome to Barra Motors. For those of you who know me, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't, my name is Joe Betty and this is my garage, Barra Motors, down here in Somerset. Today we're going to walk around the forecourt and show you some of the cars that we got on stock. Uh, we do this every once in a while and it just dawned on me this week that we're actually turning over quite a lot of cars. We traded on quite a lot because we're buying so many as well. So we've traded about eight this week. We've probably bought as many in again through our car buying service. So there's lots of new cars here that you won't have seen before. So I'll better show you around them before they all disappear as well. I would have started what's in the showroom. We've got a nice little toy at the CHR in here. Jason's taking pictures of that in a minute. So we'll come back around and let him get on with that. We've got two Mercedes SL 350s here, both absolutely gorgeous. These are very cool cars. We've got a black one with the cream interior, white one with this really nice like oxblood red interior. So if you don't know the SL, it's a convertible. The 350, that is a six cylinder three litre i believe don't shoot me if i'm wrong and they are nice kind of like really nice example low mileage ones this one's 53,000 44,000 slightly newer they've both been quite popular already they both came in via a car buying service which is definitely the way we are liking to buy stock at the moment but yeah they both sound amazing look amazing and it's nice having kind of twins but not twins because this one is white obviously with silver wheels and this one all black everything so that is the first two. Then we've almost got like another pair of twins around here, actually, because we've got two BMW 335Ds. I think they're both X drives. Maybe that's the only ones they do. So yeah, two three litre twin turbo. I think it is diesels. Uh, this one again came from my car buying service. Just under 94,000 miles, black interior, automatic. Yeah, I really like the look of this one. I think the white and the ferret gray alloys look really nice. The guy has only sold it because it's getting a company car, which is a Taycan, which is interesting. Hold that thought, because we'll get to that in a minute. Then, obviously, we got this one. This is one that we got from auction. Slightly lower mileage. Uh, 77,000. What's the difference in age? This one's a bit older. So this one's cheaper. But we bought this one, and it did have an issue. We thought it was just going to be like an ABS issue. Turns out it needed a transfer case for the four-wheel drive system we've now replaced that absolutely pucker this one also doesn't have quite nice wheels as the other one does it toby you'll be able to see on there these ones look smaller and not quite as exciting and we probably need to get them refurbished as well or maybe we should buy some aftermarket ones to spruce that up but it's probably not worth doing that because it'll probably sell long before then next then where should we go Let's talk about the Taycan then, seeing as we mentioned that just a minute ago. 2022 on about 26,000 miles. This isn't our car. Haven't quite reached that level, I have to be honest. This belongs to the owners of Mobile Eco Tuning. If you didn't see our video where we became Eco Tuning agents to remap cars and things like that, then um, check that out. They're changing into a BYD seal. And very generously to say, if we want to come check out the BYD seal, then we can do. And this is something they're getting rid of. Probably one, to be honest, one of the fastest depreciating cars going. £58,000 currently. And I think we might have just dropped it, actually, because the market is constantly adjusting. But would have been like a £120,000 car originally. But it is very, very impressive. Favourite feature is probably these, like, coated discs that are almost like a mirror effect huge brakes on it huge performance 550 horsepower it makes very cool noises inside and it's got a cool virtual cockpit and all that sort of stuff very cool indeed and the most expensive fanciest car we've ever had on the forecourt here then we start what is quite a a long line of suvs we've got in the moment this is very cool uh this came from a subscriber via the car buying service it is a BMW X5 M, X5M 50D. So it was the 308 horsepower version, but they have had it remapped. So it's now 426 brake horsepower, which some people are going to like, some aren't. But bearing in mind, we are now mobile eco tuning agents. We could take that map back off and put it back to standard if that would make people feel happier about it. But yeah, other than probably wanting to refurbish the wheels, it's just a very nice, cool thing about. 88,000 miles, I want to say. Sorry, 68,000 miles. Ridiculously fast. Has no no right being as quick as it is. And yeah, it's just a really nice thing. Next to that, we've got... Well, in fact, we've got two more cars bought for more ones. This 
Mercedes GLE, absolutely lovely. This seems to be flavor of the month. We're getting loads of inquiries on this. Again, it's very blacked out, black grills, black wheels, which are, have got a diamond cut face on it. Um, but yeah, just a very cool, impressive looking thing, isn't it? Um, black interior with kind of silvery accents and things, but quite mean looking, which obviously is very popular style at the moment. Then we have the Audi Q7. If you've watched our weekly video that would have come out probably the Saturday prior to watching this, you probably would have seen us collecting this or me driving it. I can't remember what we did, actually. I can't remember who picked it up. But anyway, it's a lovely thing. This one's slightly higher than we would normally buy. So it was 102,000 miles, but it came from a kind of extended family member and like really nice spec panoramic roof, opening panoramic roof, I should say. And yeah, really nice condition. One thing it would benefit from is a good polish all over. It's, it's lived its life out in the countryside, so it's a bit covered in mud when we got it. And the paint isn't at its best. I mean, it's still not bad. Most people would look at that and think it looks absolutely amazing, but I think we would quite like to give it a bit of a polish up. While it's in the sun, we'll have a look at the Jaguar XJ. So this one came in part exchange. Can't remember if it was against another Jaguar, perhaps. It's a three litre V6 diesel, 77,000 miles. Automatic, obviously, as you'd expect, just absolutely glorious, comfortable machine to drive. By the time you're watching this, I think this will be out on a Tuesday. The same day we will have been at G3 auctions, buying more stock with lots of other YouTube car dealers and whatever as well. This might be a good car to drive up in. It'd be very nice, actually. Very comfortable. We're going with James from Chop's Garage, and he's always wanted one of these, so at least he could get to... I could convince him that, have a big long test drive, drive four hours, and I'll nap in the back. Might be a good idea. But yeah, it's really nice, and I like... Is this... I don't know if this is Fire End's red, to be honest, but it is a nice red. I think it's a really classy looking car, kind of like limousine length, with not ridiculously large wheels, nice big chunky tyres, ridiculously comfortable to drive. That would soak up 200 odd miles to Yorkshire, no problems whatsoever. Right, we've got a few more SUVs. These are like your mid-size SUVs. I know where everything is now because I had to shuffle the forecourt around today. We've now actually got quite a bit of space, whereas before it was just madness. We've got 19,500 miles, Volvo XC40. This is a Momentum T3. That makes it a 1.5 petrol. And that's actually a really, really nice car. Drives really well. It's like a decent engine in there. Yeah, it's just really nice. Nice features. It's a cloth interior, which surprised me. Bit of a strange combination because it's got cloth seats, but they've paid for the £1,000 optional extra panoramic roof. So these people probably just didn't like leather seats. Maybe they were vegan. Who knows? Although leather seats probably aren't really leather seats these days. But either way, they chose to have the pan roof and not the leather. This is a Discovery Sport a landmark. If you're a regular watcher of the channel, you've probably seen me buy this. We got it from auction. Uh, nice low mileage. I think it's 54,000 miles. Being the landmark, it's got loads of really nice features. And it's got all these nice kind of dark accents. The kind of dark grey wheels. Black interior. Very nice indeed. Truth be told, the one thing that it needs is a turbo. It works perfectly fine as it is. It did come with a assured report and everything from the auction, but the turbo, when cold only, not when it's warm, sounds a bit like a dentist drill. So it's 400 pounds for one of those and about a day's worth of labor. So that is something we're gonna have to book in the diary for next week. Um, but in the meantime, it's sitting here looking pretty, just feeling a bit sorry for itself. Adrian is pulling out a Seat Leon that also came via a car buying service. You're gonna see a real theme coming here. We are doing absolutely everything we can to buy via the car buying service as much as we can. So that's going around, I think, probably just as well, because it looks like it needs to clean because it's got a bit of burr poo on it. Because I believe Jason was just on the phone to someone who wanted to come see it. I think they're going to come tomorrow, which will be Saturday. Then we've got the Freelander 2. Again, if you're a regular watcher of the channel, you would have seen me buy this at G3 auctions. We've since had it back. And what did it need? It was... It did need a bit of work. I can't remember what it was. I think it needed a rear diff. Rear diff was whining. Quite common on these. You would just hear a bit of a drone going on the back. So we've had to replace that. That's on there now. But other than that, it's 75,000 miles, 2011. I've got a feeling it's a manual, isn't it? Oh no, it's an auto. A GS auto. We had a white one 
that we bought on the same day, and that was the manual. And there's a bit of confusion in that video because it was a white car, but when we we're looking at it on the auction catalogue, it said Freelander 2 white. And I was like, oh, they changed the colour, but it's it's a uh, no, sorry, it said black. It's a Freelander black and white edition. That's what it was. But that has sold and gone. In fact, we also bought on that day a Fiesta. That's gone. This is our newly very sporty looking Audi A6. I don't know exactly what designation it is. It's an S-Line, two litre diesel. It had lots of chrome bits on it. It didn't have this front splitter on it before. It just didn't have this aggressive look. That is an aggressive look of our creation. We've put some aftermarket wheels on here as well. They were previously diamond cut alloy wheels and we've done a removal of the chrome bits and pieces. Because we've had this car in a stock for a couple of months. This came to us via a trade contact. Someone offered us this car. Um, it's right up our sort of street, or at least it was at the time, because it's about 92,000 miles. 2019, I think I'm right in saying. And it's just, it's just gorgeous inside. Really nice features, condition, drives absolutely superbly. Toby absolutely loves it. He feels like that would be the sort of car that he would like to have. Do you like it now more with the mods and things on? He's on the fence. To each their own, isn't it? But what's interesting to say is, uh, there, it was very mixed opinion. In fact, there was a lot more people that watched the video. We did a video on this, I should say. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Taking it from standard to doing these bits and pieces. Actually, run around the back, Toby, and you can show the lovely people the modifications at the back. The rear spoiler, the most controversial bit is this rear spoiler. People aren't so sure. People are quite happy to get behind the kind of rear valance at the bottom. Looks like a Formula One type diffuser. But this stick-on spoiler on the back, that's a step too far for some people. Yeah, the interesting thing is we've had it for 60 days, which is why I thought, do you know what, we're going to try something different and see if it sells quicker. On Auto Trader, you get like a little kind of performance bar and it changes colour and it's got a little sliding scale on it, depending on how well that's performing, how many advert views are you getting, how many inquiries are you getting. And it was like right off the bottom in yellow before. Now it's got all these bits and pieces on it, right on green. So will it sell in the next... 30 days and make that a winning decision time will tell stay tuned as i said before in that video all i can do is let you know on instagram shifting underscore metal follow me there and as soon as it sells i will update you or if it doesn't sell and i'm crying tears because i've had to trade it on or something i will let you know whatever happens i will let you know right next jaguar xe this came apart exchange against another Jaguar XE, which you may have seen me buy. It was a Jaguar XES, which is the 3-litre supercharged engine. But this one is a 2-litre petrol, uh, automatic, 39,000 miles. I think, actually, this one ended up being worth more than the other one. I can't remember how the deal worked out. But obviously, the guy wanted the supercharged one. And we've ended up with this. It makes no odds to us, really. They're both really nice cars. Not been in stock long. Couple of weeks at most. And quite a nice thing to, to get in part exchange, really. Again, I think the wheels could probably do with a little refurb. But other than that, very nice car indeed. Then we have what is probably top three of the nicest cars we have in stock at the moment. BMW 530D. I assume this is an M Sport. Yeah. M Sport, 25,000 miles. This would be the really nice one to take up to Yorkshire because it would just have every feature, wouldn't it? What age is it? 2020 on a 69 plate. It's a really nice blue. Uh, what colour is this? I know because I saw it in the advert. Mediterranean blue. I haven't seen too many with this Mediterranean blue. There's obviously Estoril blue, which was the blue 335D we saw earlier. This is a much darker, much more sophisticated looking colour, I would say. Especially with these nice diamond catalog wheels on it. Being a 2020, it's just one of the more modern cars we've had in stock. Certainly ones that I've actually bought and paid for in comparison to having on sale a return. Just, yeah, just lovely. 5 Series are probably one of my most favourite comfortable cars to drive. They just soak up the road like nothing else. So, £29,000. It's definitely the values. Those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, Blows my mind. I remember when I got this garage, the most expensive car we had was, I think, £5,000? Maybe £5,500, and it was a older Jaguar XF. And, uh, yeah, that was like 
top tier of our cars and now we're dealing in like 30,000 or more crazy in the space of five years which may seem like a long time to some people but still blows my mind let's keep moving on then because we've still got a few to do this is the audi a6 we were talking about this came from g3 auctions really really nice thing since we bought it we've had the alloy wheels refaced because these diamond cut bits they just tend to get a bit doggy so they've been nicely done again toby drove this all the way back from yorkshire absolutely loved it it's a manual i i mean personally i would have preferred an automatic to be honest lots of people are going to like a manual but yeah it's just really nice they've got really nice seats heated you've got the pop-up display that comes out the dashboard and all that sort of stuff this one's on ninety-three thousand miles and it's under 10 grand it looks like a lot of car i think but under 10 grand and under a hundred thousand miles that's it's quite cool and i don't think the tax is crazy either it might tell us on here but in my head that it's does it tell us on our sheets it doesn't apparently it does tell us that it'll do up to 63 miles per gallon on the motorway though don't hold me to it don't kill me if i'm wrong i got a feeling it's 190 pounds a year road tax but i could be wrong then we have a very nice skoda octavia vrs if you watch the uh, weekly video from by the time you're watching this two weeks ago you would have seen me go and collect this from dean down on exmouth just really nice thing i i really like these and they always surprise me how well they go how well they handle i just really like these over a lot of other kind of diesel estates from the other vag group because like the interiors they're just so cool the seats steering wheel you've got the vrs mode just very cool makes it a little bit more dramatic when you're in it a bit more exciting you can see why probably these were quite popular as like company cars because you could still just get a two liter diesel but it's definitely more exciting to get into in the morning then we have the remaining one of four dacia joggers that we had these came kind of on like a bulk deal from a company who came to us did we want to buy them this one is on 19 well just under 20,000 miles 14,000 pounds it's like brand new inside it's not top of the range model so rather than having like satellite navigation in there you've got a thing to hold your phone but i actually quite like it and just the fact that they're so new such low mileage very nice we actually sold the first one a white one very quickly then we traded two on to our friend theo down at bowen's garage because we just had way too much stock which is a problem we've been facing this week i traded him a white one and then i offered him a black one as well because funny enough you had the black one and the brown one brown orangey whatever you'd call it both here and the orangey one brownie one was performing the best and i guess that it's that type of car people like a brownie color don't ask me why you'd expect them to like black more if you'd go by the performance on auto trader brown is the way to go before we look at all these ones let's just quickly look at what we got here in terms of hatchbacks because then we can just carry on around that way we've got a few cars in prep as well that some of which have just arrived today or yesterday and they're still getting cleaned things like that we are so busy at the moment there's just going to be no time when you know everything's cleaned and on the forecourt and ready to go because everyone will be standing around twiddling their thumbs and that just doesn't happen anymore so this was a local car i think again came from the car buying service quite low mileage isn't it yeah under twenty thousand miles little agila se and it's automatic as well so obviously our friend theo who loves the low mileage stuff is all over this but there's not a huge margin in it we paid quite a you know a fair price for it and it's only a five thousand pound car so you can imagine there's not a lot of money in it certainly can't trade it on still make a profit out of it so you know it's not eating anything sitting there it's not costing me a lot to fund it to stay there so uh we'll just hang on to that because it will it will go in no time at all a small straight little automatic on low miles it's just like the perfect combination next to that we've got the skoda fabia monte carlo this is an auto as well so it's a dsg which is quite nice i bought this from Vauxhall main agent not too far from us uh, up in western supermare that was via dealer auction quite an easy sort of transaction sometimes buy a few on there i bought this because at the time we really wanted some stock and red wouldn't have been my first choice because i just find red cars don't sell that well and i mean it has kind of panned out that way but i have no qualms whatsoever that this will sell quite well under seventy thousand miles automatic it's only had two owners it'll be low insurance all that sort of stuff and actually it's got quite nice features and quite nice interior in it and it doesn't look like it from here but i'm fairly certain we've got a panoramic sunroof as well yeah it does which quite cool because it just it's got a black roof 
but actually it's a pan roof. It's interesting though because if this was black or white it had been gone and we probably wouldn't have bought it for the price that we bought it for either. It's just one of those things. We've got a mini Cooper D. I really don't know too much about this. This came part exchange and I cannot remember what it came part exchange against. Have you any idea Toby? No. Uh, 70,000 miles, two owners, it's 1.5 diesel. It's the same colour. Is it the same colour as our Cooper SD? I think that might be around the other side, but I'm not sure. Six speed manual. It's a mini. I can't really tell you too much more because I don't know too much more. Too much more? Too much more. But it's quite a nice thing. We might have to... I don't know. Come have a look. See what you think. We might have to refurbish these wheels, which seems like a bit of a shame because it only looks like a bit of brake dust. But Charlie has attempted these wheels a couple of times. He's used the wheel acid and God knows what else. And he is certain that no more of that is coming off. And I tend to believe him. So they depends how fast someone is. They still look quite nice like that. But we might have to get those repainted, which is a bit of a shame. Just because probably whoever owned it didn't really clean their car very often. And all that brake dust has built up and caked up and kind of cooked on hard. Right, so last car that's actually on the forecourt that's for sale. We've got a few sold ones that I'll let you look at. And then we'll walk around the prep queue as well and see what else we've got. So look at this absolute beauty. Again, if you are a regular watcher, you would have seen me driving this, picking it up from having its alloy wheels refurbished in the weekly last week. Another car's bought for more purchase. We bought this from Lucian in London. Just absolutely gorgeous car. I really, really do like this. The more I kind of see it around here and I'm looking at it, it's just very cool isn't it and kind of i've spent more time looking at it and analyzing and i kind of it's quite it's quite a weird looking thing really like quite bobbed off the back isn't it it's got a very short overhang on the rear wheelbase or whatever you want to call it i don't know but yeah very cool you've got all the features in there reversing cameras sat nav all that sort of stuff heated seats pump up bolsters and all that sort of stuff and being i really should know but i don't uh, tell you what, let's use this as an example. We'll do a vehicle score on it because it'll tell us the performance on it. I got a feeling it's either 340 horsepower or 380. But either way, because it's a 3 litre V6 petrol with a supercharger on it, this being the XFS, no, sorry, not XFS, the F Type S, that it's quite frantic. It's very fun indeed. So I have gone to vehiclescore.co.uk who luckily do sponsor us so I can give you a great discount code if you hang on to the end. We will put our registration in which is OE15, I've spelled it wrong, Oscar Echo 15 Hotel Sierra Zulu. It's going to give us a score from 1 to 999. I'm praying it's going to be good. It should be. 886 which is 82 above average and amazing it says. Do you reckon this will be ULS compliant? We can check that using the app. It is, because it's a petrol. Even though it's a 3 litre supercharged petrol, it's still ULS compliant. Go figure. Anyway, it's got 100% MOT pass rate. What we want to know is details and performance. It's got 370 days of MOT left on it, which means we must have done it. And it's currently not taxed. Right, let's reveal the performance. 375 brake horsepower, so it is 380 PS, I think is what it says. Top speed of 171 miles an hour. 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. The slight bitter taste in your mouth is the tax is £415 a year. It's not really too bad. Uh, but don't forget, if you are looking to buy a car or you're thinking about spending money on a car, whether it be from a garage or privately, highly recommend you do a history check. Vehicle Score have got you covered and they have got one of the most comprehensive checks you can do. If you use my code Shifting Metal 20 you will get 20% off, saving you a good few quid. Gives you that peace of mind that you're not going to just waste your money on some absolute bag of rubbish. So that is it for cars. Well, I say that's it for cars that are up for sale. What I should say is we do have some cars that are out for prep. So I think there may be one over at the MOT Centre. I can't remember what it is. One that you probably will remember is an orange Range Rover Sport that we bought in a batch of three. We went and bought them from auctions in the Midlands. We spent a bit of money on fixing that. It needed a crossover pipe on the engine. We've done that. We've done the anti... Not the anti. Yeah, the active anti-roll bar pipes on the back so it uses a hydraulic anti-roll bar type system we've done that but it has just sat here while probably six or seven other Range Rover Sports have sold that one has stayed here and I think it might just be because it's got silver wheels so it's currently 
uh, Western wheel refurbishments, having the wheels gone black. Some people aren't going to like, but I think that might just be the change that we need to get it sold. So time will tell. Keep an eye out for the next video. Walk in the forecourt and I will tell you what happened. We've got three sold cars here. So we got the lovely Mercedes GLC. This was like perfect, lovely bit of retail stock for us. But just because we were buying so many via the car buying website, I just needed the money. So we have traded that onto someone else, left them enough money to make a nice profit out of it. And I think they're coming from Cheshire to collect that one. The Electric Smart, it's quite a cool thing this. I quite like it actually. Uh, that has sold today. Um, it does need a new headlight. We did split this open, or one of the mechanics did, and resealed it but it's just such a tricky job to try and get that condensation out and have it fixed. So 85 quid, we've got a new headlight coming and we've got a bit of paint to do. There are a few cars here where we're like kind of getting them advertised and they still need a bit of prep or whatever, but we've completely changed our philosophy now when it comes to prepping the cars. We are doing them all in advance so that everything is kind of like painted up, change of a headlight, service, PDI'd, MOT'd before it even gets pictures or a video moving forward. That is the plan. If you spot any cars that haven't, let me know because I will start firing people left, right and centre. Mr. Mike Brewer, I had him on my podcast. He told me that's the way I need to do it. I already knew it, but that was all the kind of confirmation I needed. So that is a new way we're doing things. So yeah, it's not ideal when you've got cars on the forecourt like that that need a little bit of work, but we are working on it. Then we have the Mercedes CLS that we bought from James at Chops Garage. It's a lovely thing. We've, I've actually done quite a bit of driving in this myself. We took this up to Yorkshire, I think, didn't we? It's a really nice thing, really good condition. It just, we've had some interest in it. It just doesn't sell. And that's just the way it goes sometimes with some cars. I find it strange. For some reason, we just don't sell Mercedes here very well. Range Rover, Jaguar, Audis, BMWs is borderline, but we will sell those well, but Mercedes, it's just not the right market. For some reason, I think maybe we need to be close to the London or something. But in fact, where's the chap? I don't even know where the chap has bought this as well as the BMW X1 that we also had from James. He's bought both of those and he's having that. So that was another trade on job. So that is going out on Monday. Then we've got Steph who's waiting to park up another Mercedes. You might recognize this one. He has been fixing the roof on our SL500. Obviously, the lads at Automotion had it. They changed the wheels around, put standard wheels back on it. They put the standard exhaust back on it. And they had got the roof working, but it needed... It's got two batteries, believe it or not. One under the engine bay and one on the boot. One of them is for the electric consumers, as they call it, uh, which is like the roof and stuff like that. So um, we had to replace that again. And he's got it in off-road mode by the looks of it. Don't know what we do with that now. Um, it's got problems with the it's got problems with the uh, central locking, so you can only lock it via the key. That's about the only thing that's left wrong with it. Do we raffle it? Do we trade it on to someone who's always wanting an SL500? I don't really want to retail it because obviously it's an old car, it's 20 years old, um, and you know they're going to they're, they're going to want the central locking to work, which it doesn't. And it's probably just not worth our time and effort trying to fix it. So let me know in the comments what you think. Should we? raffle it would you be interested in buying a one pound ticket to win a five litre v8 mercedes from 2003 let me know so going through the valet bay this was the other mini that i was on about i don't know if this is sold or not we've certainly been popular we've just had it back from having the wheels done we'll have to ask jason whether it's sold or not got a feeling it might have done but i could be wrong um it may have just been that it just needed its wheels done so we've sent it over and of course the guys need to clean it again then Lovely Lexus. This was a car sport for more one. Bought this from Bristol, I want to say. And Chapel got in touch with us. Neil, I think it was. His dad's swapping into a mobility car, so he's selling this. Only on 16,000 miles. Quite a cool thing. The only issue we got with this is that the infotainment system is on like a constant boot up cycle. So it's, you know, you turn it on, it's like, oh, starting. And then it just goes around again, oh, starting. Oh, starting. And we think we just need to buy a new system. It's 150 quid second hand. We spoke to Lexus and they said, um, if it's not the battery, then it's the head unit. It's not going to be a coding or an update thing. 
typically like Japanese. There's no like updating on it or software updates. It's just yeah, it's just not working. So just you need a new one. The Mocha. This was one of the other ones that you would have seen me buy at G3. This was the one that was like the highest rated of the ones we bought. 97 out of 100 Auto Trader rating, and I guess it shows. It has sold. Uh, it went for its MOT today, and I think Charlie or Mark has put two new front tires on it, and it's going to need to clean again before collection. Um, but that's that. We've got a Renault Clio here, which is sold. I don't think it needs any more work. I think it's had its service, MOT, all that sort of stuff. But I think they're just sorting out payment, collection, whatever. So that one is sat waiting to go. Then ooh, there's probably going to be a few more that have moved around the building now. So follow me. Oh, we've got a uh, Volvo XC60 that has just arrived today by the car buying service. That is in here. And then the Leon, which we saw coming around earlier. Because we've got a viewing on that tomorrow, I think. One of those, if he comes to look at it, can he take it away? Um, which is the kind of deals you want to do, I guess. We had the Toyota CHR in the showroom. Guess what? Guess where that came from? Carsboughtformore.com. But he would have taken that across the road to our photograph place now. So let's go inside and I will have a look at our dealer management system and I'll be able to tell you whether that Mini has actually sold or not. Just out of curiosity to myself. I don't think it has actually, but is the Mini Clubman estate thing sold or is it just that it needed to go for it? Yep. Right, let's go and have a look at this CHR then. I probably won't be able to tell you much about this because there won't be a price board or information sheet in it just yet because that's what Jason's sat in there doing now. Having just taken it across, got his pictures, he would have done a few pictures inside in the showroom because it's much better consistent light for taking pictures inside the car. Take one picture with the BM logo behind and then he'll go off into a car park we got locally, take the pictures of the outside. Um, and he does the walk around video in the showroom as well. I got a feeling it's about 44,000 miles. It's a hybrid. This came from sort of Taunton Way, from again, from another scrub. It's quite nice in there, actually. Six speed manual. But look at the quilted, sort of Bentley style stitch seats. That's quite fancy. It's quite a funky looking thing, anyway, isn't it? You know, very modern looking very smart indeed so that is it for everything that's here it's actually you know we've got quite a bit of space here at the moment of course there's more stuff down the farm there's two cars down there which again go into theo who seems to be the only one in the industry who's selling stuff at the moment he's got a, he's got a special niche of low mileage cars and he's selling them no problem uh what have we got going over there mazda 2 came from the car buying service and a dacia duster prestige that came in part exchange against something else so those two are down there, and we've got quite a few different things that are actually off at auction. Our recovery truck, we are auctioning off. BMW would have seen not too long ago at auction. Do you remember our Boxster, the one on 30,000 miles? Uh, that's at auction as well, just because it wasn't selling for us. It was my own money tied up in it, and I just want to kind of get it sold. But BCA made a bit of a muck up with trying to sell that, to be honest. They put it down as being a Cat S to start off with, which it isn't. And then they relisted it as not having that against it, but they left something in a note saying Cat S. Bit of a nuisance but I guess they're sorting that out. Discovery 4 is at the auction. There's cars everywhere. It's, you can imagine it's pretty tricky to keep track of, but that's why we're trying to turn them quickly, not let stuff sit around. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything for this November tour of Barra Motors. So that is it for this video. We will try and do an update on the forecourt every one or two months, depends on how busy we are with other videos, how busy we are with sales. To be honest, at the end of the day, sales comes first, and I've been very, very busy both buying and selling, which is great. It was good news. Uh, it just means we struggle to find time for other things. But if you've enjoyed the video and the tour and all that sort of good stuff, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We are actually getting really, really close now to 100,000 subscribers. And the good news about that is when we do, I'm giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch completely free, a very nice Black Bay Pepsi bezel. Is it bezel or dial? I don't know. I always get it wrong and people tell me off. Don't forget our Porsche Cayenne raffle still going. You can win that for just £2. In fact, even less than that, because if you buy 10 tickets for 20 quid, you'll get five for free. And if you want to use our discount code, it's Toby10, and you will save yourself another 10% as well. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.